Hello, I'm Virginia State Senator Ghazala Hashmi, and I'm so delighted to join you today. I appreciate the good work of the American Muslim Institution. Thank you for this opportunity to reflect on American Muslim resilience 20 years after 9-11. I think that each of us has very clear memories of that tragic day that changed our world in so many ways. For me, that September morning began in a bittersweet manner. It was my younger daughter's first day of daycare and she was one and a half years old and I remember how she cried so hard when I dropped her off that morning. But by the time I returned to pick her up, I was the one who was feeling utterly shattered. The news of the planes crashing into the Twin Towers and into the Pentagon had been streaming nonstop on the radio. And I sat in my car that morning and, and I just wept. And I had to compose myself so that I could go back inside the building and pick up my daughter. For us as Americans, that day is seared absolutely into our memories. And even if we were not directly in New York or in Washington, D.C. or Shanksville, Pennsylvania, we collectively turned our eyes upward, we scanned the skies for planes, and we feared what might be coming next. But for those of us who are both American and Muslim, I think we knew what was coming next. We knew that the word terrorism would be linked synonymously with the word Muslim. And we knew that our brothers would be scrutinized even more at work, in their daily lives, and as they traveled around the country. We knew that our Muslim sisters who dress modestly, or and particularly those who cover their hair, would be harassed in public, challenged at their jobs, and even face discrimination. And for those of us who are parents of school-aged children, we feared that they would face bullying and perhaps be targeted for scapegoating. So 9-11 was, in important ways, a clear wake-up call for Muslim Americans. Personally, I was proud of the ways in which the Muslim community responded. Immediately, humanitarian efforts were made to support families who had lost loved ones. Muslim volunteers joined in efforts at each of the sites of the tragedies, and so many people worked hard to respond to the false demonizing narratives of Islam. Over time as well, we've seen tremendous engagement with interfaith communities and dialogue, an increase in academic studies, and we've had many books now written by Muslim American authors that provide a counterbalance and perspective to the narrow narratives that often take up more of the public awareness space. Critically, we've also seen American Muslims awakening politically. According to recent data, nearly 200 American Muslims representing a wide variety of ethnicities ran for office nationally in the last election cycle. I decided to run myself in 2019 after having worked in the academic space for nearly 30 years. I realized then that while my presence in higher education was good and necessary, Muslim Americans also needed to represent at all levels of government. It's important for me to be in spaces where this particular faith community has long been absent. It's important for my colleagues in the Virginia General Assembly to see me and through me the thousands of constituents that they themselves represent. We now need to continue this necessary work of political engagement. We need more people in uh, government positions, not necessarily just in elected office, but also appointed to cabinet positions and agency roles. We need representation on boards, commissions, and at PTA meetings. We need people volunteering and leading in community organizations, political campaigns, and in every area of effort that impacts our lives, our children, and the broader communities. In essence, we need to be visible, uh, present, contributing, and engaged. 
American Muslim political organizations have been in place now for several generations, and we need to continue to build on their efforts and their successes. We also need to learn from some of the missteps, and we need to expand their range. Young people are increasingly engaged in a variety of political landscapes. They should be encouraged to continue to be a part of the communities in which they live, all communities. Women and girls especially should be supported. The profound tragedies of 9-11 were scorching. They taught us some hard lessons. They also demanded that we take the pain that was handed to us and craft a path forward focused on justice, humanity, and compassion. All of these elements are the hallmarks of Islam itself. Thank you for this opportunity to speak with you today.